I'm the engineer, you know, I've invested in it too, we're together. And uh, so what we have really right now is we have Shrocks, Douglas Schrock is a friend of mine. He's a great designer, he's a good designer, so am I. And we're going to make FSI a new model rocket company. Not the old one it was, but a brand new one with all our visionary stuff. And uh, FSI was an old company with a lot of uh, hardwood, you know, nose cones, hardwood transitions, plywood fins and stuff when there wasn't such a thing, really wasn't happening. And they had the uh, black powder motors and they had their own caliber standards, which didn't take effect. The classic motors are 21 and 27 millimeter. And uh, we, uh, I made a couple of these out of new old stock. This is uh, one of their, their kits, the, the, the Nike Smoke, which is an eighth scale model. And then the other is the famous black brand too, which, uh, this one's not finished, I was working on it. It's, uh, I had to turn new tail cones, some of the other stock on this. We're going to bring all of these scale models back, plus all of the sports scale, and even some competition stuff. And uh, we brought with us some stuff that's for sale, including t-shirts. We've got our new logos, we've got our new, uh, which is right here, you can see it. If you come and look at our, uh, our booth, you can see all that stuff. So um, we're going to produce composite propellant motors. And that's one of the things that I will do. The thing about me is what uh, Bill said about those disposable motors, it's a term I don't like, but it's single-use motors. When I started doing this, and Dave, that's all there was. And there was a huge selection of all sorts of great motors. You know, there's a classic I-32. I don't know if anybody remembers that. It's a 20-second burn, 54-millimeter motor. About this long. 20 yes, seconds. please. And when uh, I've got some of the first reloads there were, and Gary had a, you know, he stood in my room at uh, Bruno. This is the future of my power. And what you said is true. Single use motors are great. And we acquire a great component. It uh, has about a six gallon capacity. And uh, we also have a propellant injector so that we can inject with hydraulics, you know, that propellant into the sleeves. And we can put the no seal in there. And, 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 and we've got test chambers for bursting. We have about 35,000 of the G60 casings that we acquired. So we're gonna make that one happen and then the old 1977 F35, which was a great book, way back in the time of Enerjet and uh, composite dynamics and things like that. So I'm going to uh, We'll show some of these kits that we brought. This is new old stock. What happens is if a model has 20 parts and there's only 18 available, I have to make a new part. And I can turn nose cones and boat tails. I can turn 100 a day. I mean, I've been turning since I was seven. So that's 40 years. What is that, 50 years? So these are the ones we put together with what we have. And we worked really hard to get it. We're in Kansas City now. And uh, the altitude is kind of hard. I'm having a hard time breathing. But these are these are going to be available. Also, t-shirts. Come by our booth and buy some t-shirts. We've got a hundred of them to sell. They're very nice, and uh, they have a big logo on the back. These are the polo shirts, which are just ours. One of the things going to happen is we're going to have new good scale models. I'm a scale model, and I don't like big scale or you know semi scale. And I also cast and machine things. So what we're gonna do is introduce new scale models with cast details. And one of the scale models I brought is a Nike Orion, which I got from Peter Always Designs. And it's, a, I think it's a one point, it's one, it's one 7.2 scale. 
and it has great cast details on it. And this, if you look at the Nike smoke, you can see these panels, which have bolts on them. So rather than make those out of cardboard with dots of glue, which is what, you know, the Reese's wanted you to do, which is fine, I will make sheets of those, and we'll have three of them. You cut them out and glue them on. And the rest will probably build it up. And then one thing is the famous javelin, D4 javelin, will have a boat tail on it. Because I, I love javelins, but gotta have a boat tail. And it'll also have other cast details. So we also, yeah, we gotta wrap it up and take questions. But we also want to bring back black powder members. That's gonna be tough. A lot of people have naysayed that, you know, and told us uh, you know, how hard it's gonna be. And they may very well be very right. Bill's one of them. He knows a lot about that. But we have all the every all the machinery to make those motors. We have to set up a mill, and we have to get the you know the safety right. We have to get the legal you know we got to get the permits and all that kind of stuff. Maybe it's going to be impossible. Who knows? But the famous motors, the F100, the F7, the E60, the uh, D18, the D20, the F I mean the E5, those are all the famous motors. And I still have dozens of them, and other people do too. And even though they're not certified or anything like that, you know, at the kind of old launches, you know, the old stuff, they fly them. And they still work as long as they haven't been temperature cycled or dropped. So, anyway, that's what we're going to do. And it's going to happen. We have a website. It's not up and running yet. We have a, we have a shop. We have an office. And we have, a, you know, a lab, if you will. We've got a lot of parts. We've got a lot of uh, dedication, and I'm retired, you know. I'm a guitar maker, and most people who know me know what I do. So, it, I'm just gonna kind of turn it over to, you know, to Model Rocket Production. So, any questions? Yes. I think we have six of them. right next to Aeros Aerotech and Quest. Oh. <laughs> Aerotech. I love Aerotech and Gary Rosenfeld and I are old friends, but I've never met Bill, so it was really nice. You know, to, I was hoping to see Gary, but I'm glad to see you. We're going to wrap this up real quick. Uh, our website is uh, www.fi.fsi. Uh, we're looking at tentatively launching the company uh, 1 September. So uh, if you want to take a look at the website, you'll see uh, it's going to be a professionally done, very nice website. And uh, we're going to make this happen. If it's a, if the size back, we are returning to flight. Yes. I don't know because Bill Schrock and I are buddies. And he's a visionary, and I think I am, although I'm full of it, you know. He has some really great designs, and we're going to introduce those as FSI models by Schrocks. <laughs> and he's also going to do a lot of our graphics and things. In fact, there is an FSI by Schrocks model over there. It's a Stomp Wolf, it's a high power model, and I hope to fly it with an H motor you know, this so uh, week. There you go. But I have 30 copies of our new price sheet. If you want to take one and pass it, if you're interested, this is the price sheet for the current books that uh, I one of those that Jack has from ARA Press. Uh, most important for me is the fact that we did get our N1 uh, reference book published uh, in March. This, I think I, I had a talk last year, so I won't do too much time. But this did take three years of research with. Uh, three Russians, uh, one Frenchman and one Englishman, and uh, we're very, very proud of it, and it is full of complete measurements down to the millimeter, 
along with uh, three chapters by the Russians themselves, which was one of the conditions of publishing. And uh, that's why the reference of the, of the book is for Mars and the Moon. The, the end one was designed for the for Mars missions, not for the Moon. And it got turned around real quick after Kennedy made his announcement. But in any, in any case, uh, we're very happy with this book. A lot of pull-out pages that are 18 inches long. And uh, Jack has these on ARA Press. Um, he'll have a case of them here when he gets here. And uh, basically, uh, it's going to be an Amazon in a few months, but not, not at this time. Uh, one thing about the uh, N1 project that uh, might not be known completely is that uh, the gentleman from England who did all the CGI work uh, is immaculate uh, for production. Uh, we took four of his favorite uh, images and uh, made posters out of them. They're 24 by 36. Uh, any of the books that were sold off the initial Kickstarter, which thank you, by the way, for the one of the Kickstarters, uh, those are available uh, by ordering for, to me uh, on my email address. And uh, also, the other part of the uh, production that came out is the CD of research material that was uh, authorized by the Russians to let us publish. This includes photographs that have never been seen except in this book as little photographs. And of course, all the drawings from uh, Nick, the uh, CGI gentleman, and my measurements that were done on AutoCAD uh, measurements from uh, Alex, the historian. So uh, I have those, that information, but again, it's uh, simply my email address, and uh, I have been producing these, I think I've sent out about 20 discs so far, so they're very popular. For some reason, the posters aren't selling that much. Don't know why, but uh, we got the posters. Uh, one other thing is, if you know uh, how the, the history of the N1 project, started with Alex Lipinski doing the measurements out in the life and order with the children research group. He made the AutoCAD, he made the blueprints, and um, he is still willing to sell the AutoCAD if people are interested in, in uh, securing it. So uh, it's $100 a shot, but he does have the AutoCAD and he will sell to you personally if you really contact me about that. So I wanted to let you know that it's still possible. Uh, one thing about ARA Press is uh, Jack's passion for the science fiction field <coughs> and uh, rocketry in general. Uh, Jack has uh, uh, Lost in Space books, 2001 books, and uh, of course uh, he did the Space Pan book, which I started to see is not a publication anymore, but uh, he carries uh, a whole series of books on rocketry and uh, essentials that we all need, including fun, fun ones like the Lost in Space books, which are fantastic. So the uh, sheet is going around with the pricing for the uh, NRA members is reduced on here. And uh, he's got a full, full house and he'll bring some books with him when he gets here tomorrow. One thing he wanted me to tell you about is his new book, uh, which will be produced within the year. And again, I have 30 copies of the cover. It is a complete history of the dinosaur project. So this is very interesting. And uh, he asked me to pass this out for you if you want the pictures. So here's the dinosaur and dinosaur. So, uh, the yeah, one book is out, and uh, Jack is going full steam on another book, and uh, I'm very happy with the Aerie Press, and I hope you're happy with the book if you've gotten one. I'll be happy to sign one at any time. If you see me around, by all means, we have one. And again, Jack will have a case when he gets here. Is there any questions about Aerie Press or any of the books that uh, are coming out? Okay, thank you very much if you have purchased the one book, and if you haven't, check it out. Thank you. We are also machining servers. <laughs> For all 
almost 15, 18 years, I, I was trapped. We operated out of our house in the Chicago summer. Last year, we made a major move, shutting down around mid May. I drove three 26-foot Penske trucks to a town about 50 miles west of Las Vegas, where we, we reside right now. Um, we moved from garage and an outbuilding and, and a basement and another another outbuilding to a, to a, a 36 by 90 foot metal building in the, in the rear of our property. We just recently broke ground for a house in the front. Uh, we're renting a house also in town right now. We made this made this move because we just we were busting at the seams. It was very difficult uh, to continue any any kind of growth. It's really hard when you're operating out of your house to even hire employees because you've got to bring people in into where you live. There just wasn't any room. I had, I had a shop where if two people were working in it, we were bumping into each other. They were so, so, so crammed together. Now I've got all kinds of space. Not a lot, not a ton of space. I probably would have more because you know, things you have just, just fill up every, every available square inch. One of the things that, uh, that transpired in the move was you take a, a hard look at what you've been doing. We've been doing it for so many years and say, okay, where, where's the core competency of what I'm doing? Uh, where do I want to go in the future? I started, as many of you, as many of you know, making uh, balsa with nose combs on a uh, self-designed CNC machine. And that was good That was good for a while when all I needed to make was some semi-custom combs, stock combs, uh, 50, 100 at a time. Uh, NC machines are great. You've got this, this machine, all you need, he is a computer file, he's got a nose, but it's got a problem. It's slow. Um, I realized that when I was needed to do more volume, so I duplicated, I built another uh, NC machine. Well, two NC machines, well, they were, that machine was just as slow as the first one, so now I was, I had double the capacity, but still not enough. So I bit the bullet some years back and did a plunge grinding machine where I can now really crank out the quantities of you, you've seen uh, those calls that I've been selling for, for some time now. Um, we're going to continue to, to make those calls. Um, we're going to continue to sell the parts that we have. We're going to downplay uh, some of the kits. We, we never made a lot of kits, but we're going to further downplay that and concentrate on building parts for the hobby uh, market. We've got three main markets that we address. You folks out there, know our website. Most of you buy from us now through, through that site. We also supply, and have from the beginning, supply tarp the parts. We're going to continue to do that. Tarp's very important to us. Um, in fact, our shutdown last year was timed so that we shut down just before the tarp finals when typically the team stopped buying parts. Don't buy, don't really buy anything during the months, the latter part of May. June, and, that, and that's when I drove all the trucks out west, uh, brought the website back up, uh, and, and we're going strong. The other, the other aspect of our business is uh, we sell a lot of parts to other kit manufacturers. There, there's not a lot of manufacturers out there who just, just make the components. There's a lot of people who put kits together, and I got to applaud Randy for all the kits that, that he's got out, out on the site. But, He's not a part, really a part manufacturer, though he may, may start being a part manufacturer. But, uh, uh, so that, that's what we're going we're gonna to concentrate on. So our website, what you see out there, we're going to continue uh, to do that. Um, I want to bring back the semi custom capability. Um, we're going to do that uh, at some point. <laughs> Third nose cone machine. Um, the, the the first NC machine could could make standard shaped nose cones fairly fast for that, that type of machine. And of course, the plunge grinder is really really fast. But I could never make the intricate kind of cones, which required yet a different a different technique. So so I'm going to go after that, and, and uh, I actually have the parts. take that second NC machine I did and I've been retrofitted. So um, we're, we're just we're gonna keep we're gonna keep
keep plugging away at our new location and uh, keep expanding the number of components that we're working on. Any questions? Yeah, I just have a comment. Uh, this is the first year where we had a TARC team that was close to home. And the ability to place an order to BMS the day after pranking a rocket to get replacement parts by Wednesday, and we're in Maryland, and you're all the way out in the West, it's just amazing. And it just was invaluable, just for the TARC team itself, the ability to get such quick turnaround for parts for TARC. That was so critical. We really appreciate that. Well, thank, thank you. And, and TARC is, the reason TARC is important with Walsh Machining is because TARC came around uh, the same year when I was downsized out of my corporate job and had to take Walsh Machining to a full-time full thing. Uh, I started getting all these orders from TARC teams, which was a real shot in the arm, because uh, I don't think Walsh Machining would be around if it wasn't, it wasn't for the TARC. So we, we, and we're going to support TARC going forward. Fortunately, TARC lost a supplier of a lot of parts with some rock. But uh, if there, if nobody's going to replace power when they did. But I can maybe fill that niche where they fill the, fill the tarp team with parts. We're, I've ordered extra body tubes this year. Where we've got already a stack of standard nose pumps that they need, so we're going to continue to do that. Uh, thanks for your, your support, John. Any other questions? We miss you in Chicago. <laughs> You know, I, I was born in Chicago, lived there all my life, in the the suburb for 62 years, and, and in a way I miss, I miss Chicago too. Uh, but this, this mood is good. My wife and I, we both like the, the, the weather, the desert southwest, and, uh, and uh, th th this is where we're going to stay. <laughs> but I, I hear you. Any other questions? We'll be by the visit in December. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> There's no snow in December. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we have a representative from modelrocketparachutes.com here. Oh, okay. How about someone from Lock Precision? Absolutely. Excellent. That's fine. Hello, I'm Barry Lynch from Lock Precision. I've been there. 15 years now, 14 years now, and I've got 29 years I've been there, I guess I've almost, I guess I've been there as long as the first time. Um, we're very happy to be here. This is the first time I've been to a, a NARO for a while, and I am so excited about today. I saw so many young people here. The STEM outreach programs you guys are working with are exactly in line with what we've been trying to do for the last four or five years ourselves, along with a lot of our local people in the, uh, in the uh, area where I live, the, the, the STEM projects have been uh, really, really dear to us. And I'm so happy to see all the people that came today. Uh, Lock Precision, today we actually did a couple of neat demos. We had a couple of our friends from Australia come in uh, last week to build a couple of rockets and come here to fly them for us. A couple of I-65s, it's a near and dear uh, rocket to us. Back in the 80s, the uh, I-65 motor, a Longbird Aerotech motor came out and we brought our rocket out to uh, make that happen with them. It was a great little long bird, eight, nine second uh, flight. Everybody's excited about it. And uh, as the motors progressed in size, that kind of fell by the wayside. I've always liked that rocket. That particular rocket flies with almost any motor I've ever fitted. And it's always been my favorite. But today was kind of really interesting because we were able to put a, a new Aerotech I-65 with our new version of the I-65 which has a few extra components. We've gone away from the uh, elastic shock cord to put in Jupiter nylon, added a couple of extra things like centering rings and, a, and a, a stronger motor mount that people seem to like. And we're able to fly them side by side with a, the old I-65 motor upgraded and a, and a 165 Aerotech single, uh, uh, single use motor. And it was kind of a neat demonstration here where we show how they go off really fast with the I-65 uh, going slow with the 165 going fast with the 65 catching up and taking way off the board. We really enjoyed that. I'm going to see that today. We flew uh, twice on the uh, CPU size 65. This was an interesting demonstration. It didn't quite work exactly like we thought it would, but that was the, what uh, the demonstration was about. It was all about getting them up and, and showing what's going on now compared to what happened in the old days. 
We also have been working with uh, uh, our parachute flight. We have a guy here, if you're in the area and want to stop by and talk to a guy named uh, Mark Lowe's, Mark was uh, trained by the Navy to make parachutes uh, back during Death Desert Storm. He actually was a rigger on a carrier and did a lot of work with that type of thing and is very, very good at making parachutes. We'd like to learn about better parachutes, bigger parachutes, better parachutes, and how they deploy and what they can be done with. And by us, not talk to Mark. Um, like I say, our, our focus for the last few years has been a STEM education project. We kind of, kind of stay away from the commercial aspect a little bit of it. They haven't done a whole lot of upgrades. But the upgrades we have done are, are I think, in line with what we've been asking for for years. On the larger rockets down to, we're down to the four inch rockets now, we're putting everything into the uh, two meter high oil range, except the shock cords that used to be called bra strap. Didn't quite like that. Um, I still like the bra strap. I've actually tied the stuff on my motorcycle and driven over 100 miles an hour with big boxes the way to do this, and uh, they seem to stay on the whole point. I've enjoyed the, the elasticity of that material. But uh, as things change, we need to change the time as well. As far as uh, new things we're working on, there's quite a few actually. I've got a, I've got a, a couple of really neat projects that uh, a, new, a new partner with us, Mark Johnson back here, has, has come on and we've we designed a couple of really interesting things that hope work out for us. We've tried them today a couple of times. Nobody knows what they are. And I can't tell you quite what they are right now, but uh, soon I'll just show them a, 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 a some smaller products. Anyways, I haven't had a lot to say. I just was told a few hours ago I could come by and say hello. And I'm glad I did. And like I say, it's been a while since I've been to this type of event, and it's really changed over the last few years. And I'm really, really excited about what you guys are doing with the, uh, the kids. We need to get the kids involved. We need to get the kids involved with STEM projects, especially because we, we need engineers, we need mathematics, and a lot of what my kid went through didn't include that in high school. So I'm happy to see that uh, you guys are working on that. If you guys have any questions about what Lockheed City is doing, I'll be glad to have you Blake? What's the name of your parachutes? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, our parachute line was called something else for quite a long time, and now it's called Block Angel. It's uh, very similar to another product out there that we used to make under a different name, but apparently we don't own that name anymore, so uh, it's Block Angel. They go up through 120 uh, inch, 110 uh, pound rocket class down all the way to uh, probably. A 40 pound rocket, uh, probably about a 20 pound rocket. So, if you have any questions on that, you can come back and say, Mark, the guy that actually makes those. We've got 12 commercial machines, and he understands how to make parachutes better than I think anybody else out there. I don't know if anybody else has been professionally trained to make them, manufacture parachutes. So, if you want to talk about parachutes, Mark's here, and he's very reclusive, which is very nice. So, lucky to have him. Come by and say hi. Anybody else? Thank you very much. Did I miss anybody? Okay. All right. Well, then I'd like to uh, thank the manufacturers. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good evening.